What's going on guys? This is Woken Stoked. Today I'm going to review the James Brew Tunnel Awning. Let's get into it. clip from earlier after about three years of owning the James Brood evasion hard shell rooftop tent I finally get to see what it's like to pair it with the James Brood tunnel awning now I've received this awning at the end of 2020 and I've been testing it out on various winter camping trips just to make sure that I have all the information before I actually do a review for you guys so this review is gonna run similar to the review I did for the James Brood rooftop tent first I'm gonna go over the technical specifications then we're gonna talk about the pros the cons and then my final thoughts on it. Okay, so here's the awning in its closed form. So you can see there are four Velcro straps, three and four. Those hold it closed, as well as one giant Velcro strip that's under here that runs the entire length of this awning. And this awning comes in two sizes, standard and large. The standard size measures 79 inches by 103 inches, and the large one measures 98 inches by 106 inches. The one I have up here, this one is a large one. So it's worth noting that the hole for you to get into the tent is the same size for both the large and the standard. The tunnel portion comes separately and it's in this small bag right here. It is designed so that you can use this tunnel portion independently of the awning. And it's small enough for you to fit it up into the rooftop tent when you're not using it. Now the last thing that comes with the tunnel awning set is the slider over here. And the slider comes in two pieces. And what you essentially have to do is you pick a side of which side you're gonna have the tunnel awning um, installed. And then you glue that on top. So James Rude tells you to glue it. I actually instead use the 3M VHB tape just because the VHB tape is not permanent. It's also super, super sticky and strong. It's the stuff that GoPro mounts use, so you know it's good. And if I wanted to change sides all of a sudden and have everything mounted on the other side, I could easily peel it off and reapply it on the other side. So don't use glue, try the 3M stuff instead. All right, so the mounting position of this awning is very important. Okay, so I have it mounted like this, and this is how you need to mount it for it to properly interface with the rooftop tent. It essentially needs to sit on the edge right here of the tent. No higher, no lower. And I think that's about it for the details before we open it. And so now I'm gonna run over how to get this thing open in tandem with your James Rood rooftop tent. So I've tried various methods of how to do this, and here's the method that works the best for me. First, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the tunnel out of that bag, flip it into place, and then you're gonna slide it into that channel while your tent is still down. Because trying to slide that tunnel into place on that slot when the tent is open is kinda hard. So once you have the tunnel slid into place, then you can go ahead and pop up the rooftop tent. At this stage, you have two choices. Because you cannot mount your ladder on this side when the awning is closed, you can either wait until the awning is open and then mount your ladder and then go inside and pop in the struts or you could put the ladder on the other side and then go in, pop the struts open and then open your awning and then connect all the bits together. Up to you which one you choose. Once you open this awning out, there's the hole for the tunnel. This thing is sealed together with Velcro. So we're gonna go ahead and just start opening it up. And then there's your tunnel. The final thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna take this last strip here. So this is the interface between the tunnel and the awning. You're just gonna stick it all along these pieces of Velcro over here. And then it's a big patch of Velcro right here. That's what's gonna connect it all together. Once you have that installed, you should see a nice clean seal all around here. All right, now let's just take a quick look at this. So there's your awning to above. So now we're in the tent, and on the side here, 
you can see this is the tunnel portion and then it just opens to below. You can leave this open when you sleep. You can also keep this closed. You have a tinted window over here so you can you know, just take a look and see what's outside. So it's not completely covering your view and it protects you from all the elements. It's pretty fantastic. You can leave a lot of your stuff down there that you don't want to bring into the tent, like your shoes, your coats, things like that. On the outside here, uh, these poles, so there are four of these poles to hold the frame in place. And these things sort of like twist to loosen and twist to tighten. So it's fairly standard for uh, most awnings. They work the same way. So I've spent a couple of days here and I have this whole thing set up along with the awning walls. And I'm gonna go over a couple of things here. Let's start with the pros. So I think the first thing that I'm gonna go with is the quality of the fabric. So this fabric is the same stuff that they use in the tents and it is solar reflective, waterproof, uh, and it is, uh, if I'm gonna remember this, but there is no way in hell that I can remember it. So here it is. It is an aluminized polyester with acrylic coating that is 100% waterproof, breathable, UV resistant, non-perishable, like spam and solar reflective. Holy Jesus. Basically what they're saying, basically what they're saying is this thing could stand up to nuclear warfare. <laughs> this material is actually really good and I didn't know how good it was until I had it tested out side by side with an ARB awning uh, of the same sort of type. And what I noticed is that when we were done our trip, cleaning out and stowing away the ARB awning was much harder because there was a lot of snow that was crystallized on the surface of the awning. Whereas with this awning, all I had to do was take a brush and just brush the snow off, stowing this thing, was a breeze. Honestly, these are the things that I would have never found out until, you know, coming out winter camping. In the summertime, things like this wouldn't really matter. It would have probably looked, you know, the same as all the other awnings. Coming into these freezing temperatures, we're talking minus 15 degrees Celsius, so close to uh, zero Fahrenheit. This is where the fabric outshines everything else. And another thing that I was impressed with was just the level of detail that went into the design of um, this tunnel awning. And I'm just gonna bring you to this one part over here. We're gonna look at the interface, that is this piece that Velcros into the awning and also Velcros into the tunnel here. And as I found out, once I attached the bottom first and I was trying to attach the top, it was really hard to get it into the correct place and get it to stick. And what they've done, is they've actually created little pockets. Oh, I can't stick my frozen fingers in here. Little pockets everywhere along this so that you can stick your hand in and press to make sure that this thing is properly in place. I know that may not seem like a huge deal, but for me, I didn't expect it, and I was having a little bit of trouble getting that whole thing put together. But when I discovered that, it actually blew my mind. And those are the little things that, when it comes to design, can make or break a product. And this was one of the things that I was really happy with. Another thing that I found that was really handy was that the pole storage for each of the four poles features a dual slot design. And so what I mean by that is, if you look up here, there's a channel for one, and then there's a channel for the other. And then the same for the storage of uh, these ones. There's a channel for one and a channel for the other. And what this means is that when you go to stow those poles away, you don't have to unlock them and make them shorter and then stow them away. This is actually a very handy thing if you do a lot of winter camping where things are prone to freezing and then getting stuck. What has happened to me with past awnings, we would make the pole shorter just so that we could stow it away because there was only a single channel for uh, this outside bar. And when it came to opening it back up in the freezing temperatures, water must have gone into there somehow and frozen the actual poles. So we had a really hard time trying to undo that pole. This makes opening the awning much easier. Even if it was frozen, you know that it is at a length that you can make do with. Having the dual channel slots in order to stow the poles away is a very good thing. So in terms of 
the other aspects of this awning. It functions as it should, you know, compared to all the other awnings that are in the market right now. There isn't really anything else that's all that different, aside from the ability to open it into a tunnel. And I guess, with that being said, if you do not want to use this and have that tunnel over there, you can just keep the flap closed and it functions as a regular awning. It's basically, yeah, it's like a two-in-one. Moving on to the cons, one of the things that I did notice with this awning, and let me, let me bring you outside here. So one of the things that I did notice with this awning is that they had these end caps that were plastic and I'm not sure if it's because I'm in a very cold climate, but it has seen some cracking at the edges. So I'm not sure why that is, but that's happened over there. And on this one, it's starting to see a little bit of cracking over here. Those things are just attached by two screws on either end. And if yours do break, I'm sure you could just contact James Rude and they could send you a couple of end caps. One other note about this awning is where it needs to sit uh, when you install it. And it's not necessarily a con, it's just how this thing uh, is meant to interface. And that is, again, at the corner edge of the tent, this is where your awning needs to sit. And it needs to sit very close to the edge over here. So if the awning is not installed in the right place, then I think you're gonna have trouble getting this ladder into the hooks here. And so the point that I'm trying to make here is that all roof racks are different and they all come with different features. My roof rack is, it's just a bed with bars. It doesn't feature any sort of like extruded metal with slots so that you can put attachments on it. What I had to do in order to install this awning was I had to go through a couple of rounds of trial and error uh, before I got it properly uh, set in place. If you don't have a dedicated roof rack and you're just running yarmulke bars or like Thule bars, then you might run into a little bit of trouble when you're trying to fit these things on. You might need to figure out a different mounting method to get that all going. That's just an important consideration that I thought I'd bring up to you guys. And so another thing about this awning is that although it's very functional and very well designed, it sits on the higher end of the cost category. The single most ex- But I don't really have an apples to apples comparison with this awning because most of the other awnings that I know that exist out there don't have a tunnel attachment. You can purchase these two items separately since you can use them independently of each other. The tunnel portion is roughly four to five hundred dollars. The awning portion is roughly seven to eight hundred dollars. And as a kit, I've seen it between $1,100 to $1,200. So again, a bit higher in the price range, which could be a deterrent to some, but it is the only thing of its kind in the market. It's a very well-designed piece of equipment, and it provides a nice little feature for the James Rude hardshell rooftop tents that, you know, normal hardshell rooftop tents don't have. I think that's it. If you're in the market for an awning, a tunnel awning for your James Baroud rooftop tent. This whole thing is a great ensemble. I would totally recommend this. It's been functional, kept me warm, kept me safe, kept me dry for these winter camping trips that I've been doing. That's been my experience so far. Absolutely amazing. I've never had anything like this before and it's been a lot of fun and I just can't wait to use it and try it out in the summer. If you have any questions, hit me a comment below. I'll for sure get back to you. If you've liked these videos, make sure to hit a like, subscribe, and share. I am truly grateful for all of the support. For those that have been supporting me here so far, thank you, thank you, thank you. As always, there's a lot more cool content coming up, so stay tuned. I'll see you guys next time.